but we win it though. They used to laugh at us, now we win it though. They used to tell me never in my life. What's going on, folks? Welcome to another exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports, the really sport podcast in all the land. I'm K Spade the Prospect. And I'm your boy LaParis57, and together we form Strong Arm Sports. Babe, we got an exciting show for these guys today. Right. But definitely, right. if you guys tuned in on EA Sports, I know you guys are like, yo, what happened? We had some audio issues, so we had to come back and record another show. I had to do it right. Gotta do it right, man. We right. like to do things right. So, for, you know, we got to get it right for the people that listen to us on the audio podcast. So we decided to come right back and do another show. So, Spade, without further ado, I want to jump right into it. I want to talk some NFL. You good with that? I guess. I mean, you don't want to start with the NBA? <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to start with the NFL, man. All I right, definitely what we got? want to talk about Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell and this suits up top in the NFL. It's pretty – they are pretty close to – maybe not this year, but in the near future – Talking NFL playoff expansions, babe. Do we want an NFL playoff expansion? They want to expand the playoffs to two additional teams. I guess one on the NFC side, one on the AFC side. Do we want an NFL expansion? No. I, not only do we not want it, I don't understand the benefit of it. Well, it's okay. one benefit. It's a monetary issue. Of course, the league Definitely. is always thinking about how to get more greenbacks in their pocket, but... It's, a, it's another league contradiction, man. They talk all this stuff about safety, safety this, safety that. You want to add another game? Like, that's going to be safer? Also, let's not leave off the fact that pretty much every team that didn't make the playoffs this year was 500 or below. With the exception yeah. of the New York Jets, who had a 10-6 and six season. If you're a Jets fan, of course, you feel like the Jets should have still made the playoffs. But the Falcons were the one team out in the NFC. They were 8-8. Eight and eight. And the next team... In either division was seven and nine. We don't want them trash teams in the playoffs. We don't. I don't. That got that got that got you asking, Spade. Do we really, did we really need the Falcons in the in the playoffs? No, we did. No. The Jets, the New York Jets. I mean, they had the opportunity to get in. If they would have won the last game, you win and you in. Simple as that. You didn't win. You got that work. Fitzpatrick pretty much went out there and laid an egg, and that's that was part of the reason why I think the Jets decided to let Fitz, you know, walk. They, Fitz was asking for too much money, and they decided, they said, man, I don't know if Fitz made these wide receivers or did these wide receivers make Fitz. Maybe they mm -hmm. feel they can do the same thing with Geno Smith. But do, do we need the Falcons in there? Do we need seven and nine teams in there? No, but you want to know what? Like you said, it's all about money. Roger Goodell, the, you know, the report out there is that Roger Goodell, if they were able to expand the playoffs, that it would be a Monday night Playoff game that you know, Spade, these guys love Monday and Thursday night games. But the only flip side to that is that hurts the players that if a, if a team play on a Monday night, it's a short turnaround to playing that weekend again in the yep. next playoff game. So that kind of yep. hurts the team that plays on Monday night. So I don't think we I don't think we need to expand the playoff, but it's looking like that's going to happen. Now, we all know that Roger Goodell wanted an 18 game season. And it does not look like that that going to happen. We know the NFL has a lot of things surrounding with CTE and concussions and everything. They have a lawsuit pending that was pretty much settled, but then the judge decided to throw that out and was like, nah, we got to go back to the drawing board. That's not going to work. So all that 700 and something million dollars and the NFL didn't have to, if I'm not mistaken, the NFL didn't have to take claim to knowing about concussions and CTE. They didn't have to take no ownership of that. That got thrown out. So... The 18 game season it looked like that's not going to work, but it looks like the uh, playoff expansion, not this year coming up, but maybe in the next year or two, it looked like that's a go. And I don't think we personally need it, but it's all about the money, man. It's yep. all about the money, so it, it's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen because they're going to stay get money. I hate the money yep. night games because everybody got work the next morning. But True. like you said, man, the league going to do what the league going to do. Since we in the That's NFL right. anyway, I want us to be in the NBA, but since we talking NFL, got a topic I wanted to bring to you as well as the listeners. In the last show, we talked about the Broncos and the possible acquisition of Colin Kaepernick. What they was trying to do with his contract, how they was trying to finagle that contract to make it work. Then we heard this past week that Denver Broncos head coach Gary Kubiak has spoken with Johnny Manziel, has interest in Johnny Manziel, thinks Johnny Manziel will be a good fit for the Broncos. That was echoed this past weekend by Von Miller, who came out and yeah. also said that he thinks Johnny would be a good fit. 
I'm kind of shook because it sounded like the cap deal was like this close to happening. It was just about mm -hmm. to happen. So I'm going to put you on the hot seat. I'm going to make you be Gary Kubiak. For one, does this mean the interest in Colin Kaepernick is gone? Are you just trying to, you know, I, I, what are you, what, what's going on with you, Gary? you Gary Kubiak right now, LaParis. What is going on with you, Gary? Well, I definitely think it's some A&M size. Like, Von Miller even came out, like you said, said he would like to have men's up. So I started looking. Like, did they play together? Von Yeah left a year before uh, okay. Manzo got there. So I think it's definitely some of that Aggie pride. Now, if I'm Kubiak, I, I get the Manziel thing, but what if I'm Kubiak, what I'm concerned with is Manziel on the field. Like, can Manziel be on the field? Like, he may have a pending suspension. You know what I mean? Like, Manziel allegedly, let me say allegedly, put hands on his girl and got... You know, he has allegedly alcohol problems. Manziel always in the club. You know, Manziel has some issues. I don't think you had him off the field issues. Aside from that little one issue with Kaepernick when he had on like the, a dolphin hat and people were saying, oh, he should be crucified because he got on a dolphin hat. He shouldn't right. wear no other team apparel except for 49er apparel. And they kind of got on Cap kind of hard about that. But Cap don't have any other off the field issues. And, I, you know, they both mobile. I, I think Kaepernick has a... Kaepernick with a number one defense, he's seen what he was able to do with a number one defense. He took him to the Super Bowl. I think if you put Cap in Denver with a number one defense, I think Cap could pretty much get them right back to competing for another championship. Now, Manziel, I happen to look Manziel numbers up, Spade. Manziel this past season didn't, didn't get a lot of stars, didn't get a lot of uh, touches, but Manziel passed for seven touchdowns, had seven interceptions, had like a 75 quarterback rating, which isn't great, which isn't bad, but it's solid. It's okay. It's okay, and he did that with the Browns. He did it with the Browns. So if, I guess if you put him around better weapons, around a coach that wanna that actually want Manziel, because the way it look, the way it look in uh, Cleveland, none of them guys wanted Manziel. Hmm. So if I'm Kubiak, Spade, I, I, if I'm Kubiak, I'm going with I'm I'm going I'm I'm gonna bust it wide open and break the bank and get Kaepernick. I don't want Manziel because it's still that suspension lingering over Manziel. It's them off the field issues lingering with Manziel. And I mean, do you really want those distractions on your team? I don't. So give me cat. You don't. But let me say this. I did some digging as well. I found out that Gary Kubiak is an ex Texan a Texas A and M quarterback. I, I yeah. didn't know that. So you talking Von wow. Miller and his ties to Texas A&M and how it affects Johnny Manziel. Same thing with Kubiak. And then I got to thinking, maybe, just maybe, an old savvy guy who played the same position you played at the same university you played at that, maybe that's what, you know, I don't know. Somebody got to be able to get through to Johnny. Am I saying Gary can? Nah, maybe man. he can. But I, I do want to say this. Get through to him, man. That's a good point, but I want to say this to him. It's a risk either way. Don't get me wrong. Cap don't have the off the field issues that Manziel has, but Cap hasn't been playing well. He hasn't been playing yeah. well. And yeah, the Denver don't need, the Broncos don't need a star QB to come over and throw for four or 5,000 yards in a season. That's not what they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, for Cap's price, and you don't know that you're going to get the Cap that was playing at the level he was playing at when he got granted that contract, I don't know, man. I, I will say this for Manziel. We haven't seen what this kid can do. We haven't seen his ceiling. We only saw him yeah. in, a, in, a, in a handful of games and a handful of situations. And like you said, he didn't look bad in all of them. Now, he had his games where he didn't look great, but he didn't look bad in all of them. I'm going to go completely opposite of you. I'm cheap. Before I overpay for a car that might break down on me later on down the road, man, I might just buy a little cheaper car. I'm looking at Manziel. It might not be that bad of a deal. Might not. Yeah, until that transmission blow. <laughs> well, for what it's worth, Cap got more miles on his training than uh, Manziel do. So, hey. <laughs> got to take it to the NBA, man. So, yeah. I know that's where you want to be anyway. Yeah. That's where you want to be. But we're going to take it to New York. So, we still up here by me. We're going to take it to New York. We're going to talk about the New York Knicks. Now, reports coming out of New York are that Kurt Rambis will not be in a room. It will be removed. It's a... Kurt Rambis will not be the interim coach anymore. They looking at Kurt Rambis to be the official head coach of the New York Knicks. But down there in Charlotte, there's some lingerings too. Pat Ewan, like, you know what? Man, I paid my dues. Pat Ewan said I would love 
I would be a great fit for the New York job. My number's hanging in the rafters up there. I want to coach the Knicks. Spade, I got two questions for you. One, is Kurt Rambis it? And two, should Pat Ewan at least get an interview for the Knicks job? Definitely Pat Ewan needs to interview. Pat Ewan needs two or three interviews based yeah. off him, based off two things. For one, he basically gave the Knicks any no, notoriety they, they have that we know of. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The Knicks was a prestigious team at some point before Pat. But, I mean, anybody our generation, all we know is Pat Ewan. And, and, and Pat made that team relevant. Took them to the playoffs every year. Even though Michael Jordan dropped them off every year, he went every year. And then, like yeah. you said, man, this guy's put his dues in. He's been an assistant for 13 years. 13-year assistant when we've seen at least two coaches come right off the hardwood on to wearing a suit and holding the clipboard on the, on the sideline. He deserves the opportunity. Now, I do want to say this about Kirk. I didn't think Kirk was it. I still don't really think Kirk is it, but it's something about him that I like. So, in case you guys haven't heard, Derek Fisher recently did an interview where he was asked about the implementation of the triangle offense. And Fish said, look, man, it's, it's not easy to teach. It's not easy to implement. So, of course, they couldn't wait to run in front of Kurt Rambis and ask him those same questions. And he could have really, he could have looked out for fish and been like, yeah, you know, it's not too easy. But, no, Kurt did the complete opposite. Kurt said, well, when you really want to learn something, like, you got to you gotta get in it. And, and we didn't practice it enough under D. Fish. Straight mm. bang the cannon at him. So, anybody wow. who saw Kurt play back in his day, he was a hard-nosed guy, gritty guy, would take your head off if you came to the basket. Maybe, just maybe. That grit has come off the court and, and it's worked into his business savvy. Maybe he walked in that office and looked at Phil Jackson and said, look, if you want a man who getting beat up by Matt Barnes to run your team, so be it. But I, yeah, I don't know what he said. He said something to win over Phil Jackson. And I got to admit, hearing him bang the cannon on Derek Fisher like that impressed me as well. Maybe Kurt, maybe Kurt better than we gave him credit for. But yeah, definitely, if nothing else, man, you got to give, you got to give my boy uh, you in a shot. Got to. Well, definitely, I think Ewan should get a shot. Ewan been an assistant, like you said, for 13 years. Only 13 got two interviews. Years. And one of those was to coach the Knicks D-League team. So, I'm going to go from being an assistant, from being an assistant in the NBA to go over and be a head coach of the D-League. Come on. When you got guys like, when you guys got, when you got guys like Fisher and Jay Kick taking the jersey right off and putting on the suit and becoming head coaches. Yep. Come on, man. That's like Pat Ewan. And I'm not just saying the Knicks job. Pat Ewan should at least. Get an interview. It's other jobs open, like the Phoenix job. It's other jobs that's open. I'm not saying he should be the head coach of any of these teams. I'm saying he should at least have more than two interviews over a 13 year, uh, over over 13 years of paying dues. He should at least have more than two interviews. So he at least deserve. He at least deserve a uh, interview with the Knicks and as well as other teams. I'm not saying Pat, you're going to be a, an, an amazing coach. I don't know, but they don't know either. Because, right. I mean, if you look at it, Mike Tomlin wasn't wasn't going to get that job in Pittsburgh. But he went in there, he had an interview, and he wowed those guys and got the job and won a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl. So you never know what you can have if you don't at least give a guy, you know, a, a, an, an interview. And that's all I want for Pat Ewing. Pat Ewing has been paying his dues for mad long. And only got two interviews. That's a travesty. Kurt Rambis, baby. Now, you saying Kurt Rambis is, you know, this goon. And I know Kurt Rambis straight up elbow the dude coming to the paint. But Kurt Rambis Everybody. had plenty of opportunities as a head coach. If I'm not mistaken, he was a, he was an interim coach as, for the Lakers. He was an interim coach for the Timberwolves. I think this guy's record is crazy upside down. I think we pretty much know what we got with Kurt Rambis being a head coach. I think it's time for another guy to get in there. Now, I don't know if Pat Ewan will be able to run the triangle offense. I don't know if Phil should even be running the triangle offense because he don't have a mellow. I mean, he don't, excuse me, a mellow. He don't have a Kobe. He don't have a Shaq. He don't have a Jordan. He don't have a Pippen. I don't know if Phil figured out that, man, you need other guys aside from mellow to run this triangle. A follow kind of been taking a dip as of late. So has Chris Taspozingas, which a lot of people are saying is, is who fought Spade. Because they're saying Rambis. it's because of Rambis. That's what they're saying. Now, I don't know that to be true, but that's what the rumors are. So I think we pretty much know what we got from Rambis. I think it's time to get some new, a new voice in there. And who, what better voice to have in there than Pat Ewing with the New York Knicks? I definitely think he deserves a shot, man. And I'm not saying give him the job. Give him an interview, Phil.
That's all. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, so check this out, man. This week that just passed us, a couple of big names made it into our Hall of Fame. I'm going to say three, but LaPaz is going to give me hell if I don't name this fourth person. So we heard Yao Ming, Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. Allen yeah. Iverson, a.k.a. Yeah. Bubba Chuck, and, of course, Cheryl Swoops. You got to say that. And, of course, all and the Izzo. grumbling was like. Izzo from Michigan State. Izzo from Michigan State. And every time I name somebody, he going to name somebody who I didn't put in. <laughs> I should have just got the whole list. Anyway, the, the big thing is this. Everybody's talking Shaq and AI and, and their tremendous accomplishments within the league. And then you kind of look at AI. I mean, I'm sorry. You kind of look at Yao Ming and his accomplishments pale in comparison to these other two guys. So it made me want to dig deeper. I dove in. I started looking through Yao's numbers. And, bro, I'm not convinced that Yao is a Hall of Famer. Of course, his, his career was riddled with injuries. I mean, the type of injuries that kept him off the court. He really... He really only played two complete seasons. I give him three. I think one year he played like 77 games out of an 82 game season. I call that complete. He's really only had like three complete seasons. Can this guy get in with 19 points a game and nine rebounds on three seasons, LaPaz? Well, clearly what he can. NBA? Should he? What about yeah, the NBA said he can? Right. In my opinion, in my opinion, I don't think y'all was all the fame. And I get. I get the NBA, you know, the, the NBA, well, the Hall of Fame, is. The, I think it's the Nate Smith Hall of Fame. It's, it's for international play. That's included as well. And if I'm not mistaken, Yao kind of had a, a solid career over there. I think he uh, won some championships over there, you know, in the CBA. I, I think that's the Chinese Basketball Association, wherever he played, wherever he played. If I'm not mistaken, I actually think he owned a team over there that uh, Marbury, I think, played for. But if you letting people over... If you letting people in the Hall of Fame for what they do overseas, then you gotta let my man Marbury in. Do Marbury get in next? Cause Marbury over there cooking. <laughs> they done they done built a statue in front of like Shanghai Stadium Arena for Marbury. So Marbury over there doing the damn thing. So do Mar do Marbury get into for Spade? In my opinion, I don't think. I mean, I get why the NBA did it. I get it, but in my opinion, I don't think Yao has the body of work to get in get get in the, in the Hall of Fame. I have some guys that's not in the Hall of Fame, babe. Oh, that's and great. Because I got a few. There's some older players. Okay. Say it again. Yo, I said that's great because I wrote down a few names too. Go ahead. Yeah, man. I got a guy yeah, by the name of George McGinnis. And you guys may not know this guy. Played in the ABA and the NBA. George McGinnis played 11 seasons. He averaged 20 points and 11 mm. rebounds, mm. 3.7 assists, and 1.9 steals, which you might as well round up to two steals a game. That's what he averaged. But let me tell you a little bit about George McGinnis. George McGinnis. Went to Indiana where he averaged 29 points a game and 15 rebounds. Like George McGinnis was that dude he was cooking. He's not in the um he's not in the Hall of Fame. I got another guy for you. Buck Williams. Buck Williams played 17 seasons. A lot of you guys might know Buck Williams from playing, playing with seasons. this guy. Yeah, 17 seasons. A lot of you guys might know Buck Williams from playing, playing, you know, basketball video games. But Buck Williams averaged 12.8 points a game, which you might want to round up the 13 points and 10 boards, which is which is a double double. Buck Williams averaged a double double for 17 seasons. Now I know you guys are like, well, 12 points, yeah, but Buck Williams played for a lot of different teams, a lot of different times. And in my opinion, I think Buck Williams deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Averaging a double double for 17 seasons is pretty impressive. Those are guys that played that had the longevity and you know have a body of work. That, that's not in the Hall of Fame. Yao Ming played, you might as well say, three seasons. If I'm not mistaken, I think he played technically eight seasons. Technically. I think it might be eight seasons. And three of them was, was solid seasons. Three of them was solid seasons. And I don't think that should get you in the Hall of Fame. I agree. I definitely agree. Uh, I want to ask the people viewing or listening, give me your feedback. Should Yao Ming be in the Hall of Fame? And I recognize, don't get me wrong, we talked about this on the live show. Yeah. I know that y'all did so much revenue-wise. Yeah, maybe not even revenue. I mean, I know revenue, but maybe more than that. Maybe it did something to help build it communication lines the game, between man. the U.S. He globalized the game. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, I know I mean, he did I, all of that. In my opinion, yeah. I, I don't want to say y'all said. I got, I got a few names here I just want to throw you away. The Paris gave you guys who've been around 
uh, you know, who played in a long, long, long time ago. Y'all probably don't know those dudes. So I'm going to come a little bit newer. Got a couple of names here. Sharif Abdul Rahim. I brought this guy up on a recent show. Always played for bad teams. Average 18 points a game, eight rebounds a game. Beach. It's never even talked about for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Never. Um, do you guys know that Mitch Richmond is still not in the Hall of Fame? 21 Correct, points a game crazy. for his career. Mark Aguirre, 20 points and five boards, still not in there. Spencer Haywood, 20 points a game, 10 boards a game. These guys are not in the Hall. So, for me, I wouldn't put y'all in, but I understand it. I'm not mad at y'all for being in. Y'all could be injured for the entire season and still lead every NBA player in all-star votes, which meant he I mean, had a, a billion whole, people in Asia, babe. He had a Come whole on. country voting them in. And, and, yeah. and that's the kind of stuff right there that the NBA wants. They want that. They want it desperately, yeah. too. So I get it. I definitely get it. I mean, there's more dudes I can name, too. Glenn Rice ain't in there. Kevin Big Johnson up. ain't in there. I mean, it's a ton of guys. I mean, Glenn Rice won a championship. It's a ton right. of guys that's in there that I think deserve to be in there that's not in there. I get why they put Yao in. Trust me, I get it. I understand it. Yao, I it. Yao made the game bigger than what it was. I get it. I get it. Had, had all of China, you know, voting for Yao Ming. I get it. But... I don't think his numbers should, you know, allow him to be a Hall of Famer. I could be wrong. I know you guys are going to let me know in the comment section down below. I mean, let me know. Let me know your opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys could sway my opinion. Let me know. Does Yao deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Let me know. Basketball Hall of Fame. Ready to move on? Yes, sir. What else we got? Spade, I got to take it to the NCAA, man. We're going to take yes. it to the NCAA. We're going to talk about the national championship game, mm -hmm. which was a very, very... Man, entertaining game. It was a very entertaining game. Came down to two buzzer beaters. Right. Carolina hit a buzzer beater. Then they, oh, they didn't hit a buzzer beater because then Villanova came down and hit another buzzer beater. It was just an amazing game. And our boy Jay, our boy Jay Wright, just cool as ice. Cool as ice, twice as nice, and they never had a bad day in his life. <laughs> you he ain't just never too lied. smooth. He just too smooth, and I mean, he ain't even crack a smile when this player came down and banged uh -uh. three to win the national championship game. Spade, give me your thoughts on the national championship game. Was it the best ever? For me, I, I do not like to talk about stuff I haven't seen. I ain't finna go on YouTube and pull up some black and white film of a yeah. championship game back in 1952. I'm not finna do that. But what I've seen, this was the greatest championship game ever, ever. Both of these teams wanted it bad. They both are well-coached teams, a lot of talent on the floor. And at the end of the day, man, I made the right pick em game call. You guys who was here last week know that was our pick em game. The parents picked UNC. I warned against it. I did think it would be a higher scoring game than it was. But I told you guys, Villanova was the hottest team in the bracket. And in order for them to beat the Miami Hurricanes, they had to be the best team in collegiate hoops. So, of course, of course they won, man. But, no, real talk. Amazing, amazing, amazing game. I watched the game from tip-off to credits, even through the commercials. I couldn't move. I was glued to the set. That was a hell of a game, bro. I mean, I was this close to being right. Like, I was a couple of seconds away from being right. But, I mean, I was on Twitter, Spade. You know, after the game went off, I mean, everybody had Twitter going bananas. And I got hopped on Twitter, and I read uh, some of the comments. And I read some comments that, Actually made some great points. They were saying that the rebounder from North Carolina was horrible, which was true. They said that Carolina had the height advantage with the bigs, and these guys couldn't get an entry pass in there, and the bigs didn't have any post play to um, be able to take advantage of the mismatches, which if you look at the game, which is actually true. Oh, and, and, you know, I'm going to tell you what's ruining the game, Spade. Analytics, because... You look at it now, it's all the damn near all the shots in the game was layups or it was either layups or three pointers. Like the mid range game does not exist anymore. And it's because of analytics. Analytics is saying instead of taking long twos, take another step back and take a and take a three. And I think that could be ruining the college game. I don't think that was the reason. While Carolina lost, they still had a shot. I mean, if they would have just came down, put a hand in old boy face a little closer than what it was, you know, it could have clanked off the rim. Definitely was one of the best college games in a long, long, long time, okay. especially national championship game. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's a lot of things Carolina could have did better. <laughs> I mean, the Jordan memes was just hilarious. The Jordan memes, they just, 
let everybody on. <laughs> they let the whole state of North Carolina have it, which was hilarious. I felt more I mean, sorry for Michael Jordan than the kids losing. MJ cannot yeah, get away from this damn crime meme. He just can't. Yeah, man. It's hilarious. It's definitely hilarious. Definitely one of the best uh, college basketball games in a long time. I just think, I just think, man, the mid-range game, man, it, it it does not exist anymore, Spade. If you and you look, I mean, we was watching a game. We was watching a game the other day. It was the Warriors and the Celtics, and Evan Turner was like the mid-range came. He was pulling mid-ranges, mm-hmm. and it's like a lost art, even in the NBA. Could be the NBA fault, because Steph Curry got people jacking from 50 feet now. So it could mm-hmm. be it could be the NBA fault, but you see it transitioning into the college game as well, and I think that could be part of the reason Carolina lost, but not the main reason. Well, I don't know, man. Early on in that game, at some point, Early in the game, Nova started to pull off. And the big yeah. threes from UNC was keeping them in the game. And I think when you're playing from behind, you don't get comfortable enough to run your scheme like you want to. So maybe yeah. they go to the post more if they're up and it's a comfortable league. You know, you go to the post, you slow the tempo down, maybe you get a couple of trips to the foul line. But when you're playing yeah. from behind for the bulk of the game, you don't have that luxury. Maybe it's that I'm not ready to write off the uh, Carolina Bigs as, as you know, them not being able to take advantage of smaller defenders or uh, whatever, you know, whatever they're saying about them. Not just yet. Nah, I don't know, Spade. They definitely had the height advantage. You don't take it in. You, you, don't, you don't bang down in and get them dudes in foul trouble. Come on, man. Hindsight. During that game, those mean, threes well, was falling. And them boys was like, let's keep pulling these threes. That's, <laughs> that's getting us I, back in the game. Yeah, I could dig it. So anyway, man, I'm going to move to the next topic. We talking about Villanova and can't talk yeah. about Villanova without talking about that cool ass, smooth ass head coach they had on the sideline. And I read he was wearing a $7,000 tailored suit. Ooh. That boy was clean as a whistle. He was sharp as a tack. Better know that, yeah. Jack. We got all these old pimp sayings. <laughs> that man was it, though. Anyway, I'm bringing him up because Phoenix Suns, somebody has heard, I do this, sources have said Phoenix is interested in pursuing right as their head coach. For Phoenix, I feel like it's a great move. For for Jay Wright, I don't know though. So I'm asking you, bro. If you Jay Wright, do you even do you even consider this? Man, if I'm Jay Wright, I know. No, you are a legend in Pennsylvania. Now you won the championship at Villanova. And I think that's what's wrong with a lot of these coaches. That's what's wrong with a lot of these coaches. These these college coaches, you know, they 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 kind of get that lore, that that lore going about them, and the NBA and the NFL start calling. Not just the not just the NBA, but the NFL do the same thing. They start calling. They get the next big thing that got college on Smash. Like look at Chip Kelly, and look how that worked out. You know, you look at Billy Donovan and how that worked out. Mm-hmm. If I'm Jay Wright, I'm trying to build up Bill and Nova to be the next dude. I'm trying to be the next Coach K. I'm trying to build these teams up. Trying to build up Villanova to be this prestigious school where all these kids want to come and can compete for a national championship every year. Winning the national championship pretty much puts your name in stone. You know, you can get a statue built. Like things happen. Look at Nick Saban. Nick Saban, Nick Saban was was it at LSU, went to Miami, wasn't it? Went back to Alabama, won a couple national championships, and is a god in Alabama. Jay Wright, you have the potential to be a college basketball god in Villanova like if you never leave Villanova you can get that lifetime contract like Coach K got down there at Duke if I'm Jay Wright I'm staying at Villanova and I'm just building on this success here that's a valid point that's a valid point the the thing with me it always depends on the team it depends on the organization you gotta be getting the job you right Villanova is a very prestigious because Billy Donovan got a job a great job and he he in my opinion, he's not doing a better job than what Scott Brooks did last year, and Scott Brooks didn't even have KD all season. You're right, but what I'm saying is, you look at the deal that uh, you look at the offer Billy Donovan was given. That's a more enticing offer to go coach two of the best players in the league. Yeah, sign me up. Don't get me wrong. I like Phoenix. They're a young team. I think they got an up arrow. They got some pieces on that team. It's really gonna be nice. Yeah. But let's face it, right now that team ain't even it. That ain't no playoff team. So you're going to go from being perennial winners at Villanova, and I'm not saying they win it all every year because they don't, but that team is in the tourney every year easy. Yeah. And I don't even think you got to coach until they get to the tourney. 
you go from that to coaching <laughs> Phoenix, man, that's going to be such a stressful situation. You ain't lying. It, it, it gets so hot in Phoenix, man. It got that dry air with like that desert dirt floating in it. Yeah, you, you take a deep breath and you get dirt start, all in the back of you. You start tasting. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I can dig it. Yeah, if I'm so, Jay, so you, so I'm you staying say, put. If you Jay Wright, you staying? I'm staying put. And I'm not saying I'm staying put forever. It might be an NBA yeah. job that entices me. I just don't know that this Phoenix Suns job is it. However, Phoenix, word on the streets is it's a guy named Pat Ewan down in Charlotte looking for a gig. Hit him up. Hit him up. And Spade, I'm saying, look, we the um the, the Chicago Bulls just got Hoyberg from Iowa State. Look how that worked out. We ain't even in the playoffs this year. Horrible. We ain't even in the playoffs. We fired Tibbs, got Hoyberg from college, and we ain't in the playoffs. So, yep. I mean, Hoy, I mean, Tibbs did more with less last year than what Hoyberg had this year, and we didn't make the playoffs. To me, I I say that's coaching. I think that's coaching. Yeah, I'd be hard pressed to coaching. argue with you. You ready to move on? Yes, sir. My favorite Let's part move of the on show, to the right? Pick'em game. Now, the Pick'em game you did win last week by this much, babe. By that why, much. Why you gotta put that part in there? Did I win? I'm just saying it was about it was about that much. So far, we kind of been neck and neck. I know you said on no, the live haven't. that you was beating the jakes off me. That's not true. I've been crushing you at Pick'em games. 2016, I've been crushing you at Pick'em games. That's not that's not accurate. I check the hey somebody check the tape. Check the tape. That's not accurate. That well, is not accurate. But I got a well, good one for us this Sunday right here. I got a good one for us. All right. We're gonna go to go we're gonna go Golden State Warriors at San Antonio Spurs this Sunday. Who you got spade and why? I hate yeah, thinking I, these two teams. See, whenever you gotta bro. start off with that. Uh, I hate man. it, man, because it, it it's up to Pop. I always it, tell people don't listen to lying. Greg Popovich. Pop will tell you something just to throw you off. Pop is the ultimate poker player looking at his hand. He would not reveal his hand. He's not going to tell you what he got. He'll tell you everything but what he got in his hand. And for that reason, that scares me. I've been saying I think Pop cares about that home record. He says he don't, but I think he does. And because I think he does, I think he plays his, his starters. I think everybody plays. And I think they, they play hard. I think they fight for the win. Another area of concern is LaMarcus Aldridge and his dislocated pinky on his shooting hand. I don't even know. If you need your pinky, I don't know. I can't say you do or you don't. My jumper broke either way. But if, <laughs> here's a big if. If those starters play, give me the Spurs. Give me the Spurs in San Antonio at home where they got a pretty nice win streak that I think Greg Popovich cares about. Give me the Spurs. And that's the, Pop is the reason, is the reason. I'm going to say I'm going with the Golden State Warriors. I know everybody playing for the Warriors because they got balls to the wall. They're going for the gusto, gusto. They want 73 wins. So I know they playing. I don't know what Pop going to do, Spade. I don't know, never know. what's up with L.A. I got a feeling he's going to sit L.A. I got a feeling he's going to sit Kawhi. Kawhi been having some little nagging injuries as well. Uh, L.A. just hurt his finger. I, I, I think Pop would rather have these guys 100% for the, for the, for the long playoff run and trying to go undefeated at home. I want Pop to play everybody. I want Pop to go because I don't want Golden State to get the Bulls record. I'm just biased like that. You guys know I'm a Bulls fan. Me neither. Me neither. But if you trust Pop, you can't, I mean, you can't trust Pop. If you're a fantasy player, you know Pop will jack your lineup all, all up. He like, sure he'll will. start these guys and then play them 10 minutes. That's just what Pop do. Like, Pop will call up the D-League like, who we playing tonight? Send me everybody from the D League. All my starters is out. Like that's what Pop do. So hopefully I'm wrong. I want to be wrong. This is one of the few times on the pick'em game I want to be wrong because I don't want Golden State to get the record seventy two and ten greater. I want my Bulls to keep the record. Hmm. But for that reason, for for that reason, I gotta go Golden State Warriors because I don't know what Pop is going to do. I got a funny feeling. I think this is a nationally televised game, if I'm not mistaken. I think Pop. I think Pop don't give a damn about that. I think Pop going to sit somebody and he's going to have dudes like Simmons and David West starting against, against those guys, man. I, I, I don't trust Pop. So give me the, give me the worries. You may be right, and, and I hope you are right. I want the Spurs to win, but I hope you're right because I'm tired of you getting crushed in the pick'em game. I'm crushing okay. you in the pick'em game. He Let's really go ahead and move to the, the last tape. segment somebody of the show. Somebody check the tape. I don't want to hear. <laughs> somebody Let's check move to the, the last segment of the show. 
Most we got in segment, the Strong Arm Performer of the Week. It is a very, extremely prestigious award given to an athlete who raised his level of play. Yeah, the Heisman yeah. of Podcast. Who raised his level of play to ensure that his team got the dub. The Ferris, you on the hot seat, bro. You're Strong Arm Performer, man. Why? We got a new inductee this week. I got to give it to a guy that raised his level of play for the Los Angeles Clippers. We got to take it to L.A. And I got to give mine to Cole Aldridge. I know you guys are like, who? Cole Aldridge. He shot 10 to 15. He had 21 points, 18 rebounds, and five steals. Cole Aldridge went all the way bananas in a game that Doc River said, I'm not playing none of my starters. Cole Aldridge, a backup center, went Dummy at 21 points, 18 rebounds, five steals, almost had a 2020 game. And for that reason, right there, Cole Aldridge, you are my strong arm performer of the week, Cole Aldridge. That's impressive. That's impressive. I almost want to give mine to Doc Rivers for having the balls to sit yeah. his entire starting team. But no, seriously, I gave my strong arm performer of the week to a guy on the same James Harden. James Harden? Almost. Uh, but no. Actually, man, to me, Cole Aldridge played great. Played phenomenal. Was a key part to that to that win. But you cannot, and I saw this in the comment section. Shout out to the homie Nate. If you're giving that award to somebody in that game, you got to give it to the guy who dropped the shot heard around the world. I'm talking about Jay Crossover, Jamal Crawford, perennial sixth man of the year. Just won it this year again, by the way. 30 points, five boards, four dimes, one steal, one block, and a game Winning rainmaker for the win, man. Jamal Crawford for that performance. You are my strong arm performer of the way. I mean, that's what Jamal Crawford do. He get buckets. You see what he do when yo. all them other dudes get out the way. Like that's what Jamal Crawford do. You ain't never like, lie. Jamal Crawford just get in there and he yo. That's what he do. So it's well deserved. Jamal Crawford went absolutely wheels. And I mean, he, he banged the shot to win the game. Jamal Crawford got musky. Man, he might have like 15 six man player of the year awards. Like, he just always wins six man of the year. I don't know why he not starting. Jamal Crawford is a stud. But let's let's close the show out, Spade. Let's going in the show. Definitely want to thank you guys for tuning in. We had some we had some issue. We had some issues on the live um the live uh cast on, on EA Sports. Had some audio issues. We're gonna work those out. So we decided to still bring you guys another show. Wanna thank you guys for tuning in. You guys already know if you're new here. Hit the subscribe button and take two seconds. If you're a regular, hit the like button and take another two seconds. So that's four seconds. I'm asking your time. Just do it like Nike. Just do it. I want to thank you guys for watching. You know, we got audio podcasts everywhere. Podomatic, yeah. iTunes, SoundCloud, and now we live on Twitch on EA Sports. So if you guys can't, ain't no reason why you guys should be missing shows. No reason. We everywhere. We everywhere. There's no reason why you guys should be missing shows. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. We want to thank you guys for your continued support. We'll see you guys next episode. Peace.